Have you heard of the tea to butter analogy of watercolor paint consistency? Many watercolor artists use this analogy to describe the ratio of water to paint. But why is it so popular? In this video, I will explain the analogy, how to use it, and why it is so helpful, especially to those learning how to paint in watercolor. Sound interesting? Keep on watching. Welcome to my studio, my name is Chris. This channel is all about tools, tips, and tutorials for growing in watercolor. Before we get started with tea, coffee, milk, cream, and butter, let me tell you about some free online resources that I have created for those interested in growing in watercolor. My free online course, Getting Started in Watercolor, covers all the essential supplies and materials needed for setting up your watercolor painting practice. I even show you how I set up my creative space. A second free online course, Mastering Values, explores the importance of seeing and re reproducing accurate values in watercolor. The course includes a few valuable exercises and downloadable templates for getting started. Both of these courses are available on my website at studio.kristabruin.com. I encourage you to check them out today. Now back to the tea to butter analogy of paint consistency. As you can see in this chart, there are five steps in the system. Tea, coffee, milk, cream, and butter. In this particular example, I have used cobalt blue watercolor paint, but you could use any color of paint. However, the exercise works better when you're using tube paint as opposed to dried pans of paint, but more on that later. Now, a lot of people get confused by thinking that this analogy has to do with the relative values of the paint at each step, how light or dark they appear. But the analogy isn't actually focused on value or vibrancy or even relative opacity of the paint. It is simply a way to describe the consistency of the watercolor paint that you're using, or in other words, the ratio of water to paint in your mix. Now, this is not to say that paint consistency doesn't affect value. Yes, of course, it certainly does. But the focus of this analogy is on paint consistency, not value. The first step is T. T has a high ratio of water to paint. Something like 90% water to maybe only 10% paint. Imagine a weak cup of brewed tea with nothing added. Now, don't focus on the color here. This analogy has nothing to do with color. Again, it's about paint consistency. Look at how that puddle of paint is moving on the palette. The next step is coffee. Think about coffee as compared to tea. It has a slightly thicker, more full-bodied consistency. However, it's still very fluid. If you were to tilt the palette, the paint at this consistency would still move quite easily. Maybe the ratio is now 70% water to 30% paint. These percentages, by the way, are just estimates. Don't worry about getting perfect ratios. That is not the point. However, when you paint with coffee consistency paint, you will see less of the paper and more of the paint. The next step is milk. Imagine whole milk, not that wimpy 1% stuff. It is thicker than tea or coffee. When you view the mixture on the palette, the puddle moves more slowly. At this point, maybe the ratio is 50% water to 50% paint, and the paint is now covering the paper well. In the fourth step, cream, we've crossed over from dominant water mixtures to more dominant paint mixture. In other words, there's more paint than water in the mix. The puddle of paint doesn't really move on the palette. We should imagine heavy cream, not half and half. This has very thick consistency. And also, don't think about the color of cream, like white, but rather focus on the consistency. As you mix a little bit of water with mostly paint, try to get the consistency of heavy cream. This type of mixture can easily cover up your earlier washes of paint. Finally, the fifth step. This is butter. This step is the easiest to achieve and requires no real mixing. For butter, we take the paint right out of the tube or out of the well on our palette. We don't really use water or we use just enough water to get the paint onto the brush. Imagine the thickness of real butter. This is why it's easier to use tube paint rather than dried cakes. It is hard to get butter consistency paint with dried pans of watercolor. When we apply this consistency of paint to the paper, we get a dry brush effect. The paint skips over the texture of the paper. 
Again, this is the thickest mix we can get. These five levels of paint consistency can be used in a variety of ways, but a common approach to watercolor is to use the thinnest mixtures in the earlier washes of the painting. The first wash is typically tea or coffee. Then we move into the middle value washes where we're defining the shapes and the form of the subject. At this point, we move to milk and cream consistency paint. And finally, as we add the final details of the painting, we pick up our butter consistency paint and add texture and focal points to the subject. Usually, these are dark details, but in the case of some lighter paints, like whites or yellows or bright pinks, we could use thick paint to add a highlight or a bright detail or a reflection. Remember, this analogy is about paint consistency and not necessarily value. You will hear me use these terms in many of my painting tutorials. But remember, while there are five distinct steps in the analogy, in practice, it's really a gradual scale of paint consistency from thin to thick with many more possible ratios in between. The important thing is that you're aware of paint consistency and you learn to use it effectively in your watercolor paintings. More about that in my future videos and courses. I hope you find this analogy to be helpful as you advance in watercolor. I use the analogy because I have found that common terms are useful when describing complex processes. It helps to create clarity. Also, when I emphasize the, these paint mixtures with my students, my students just become more aware of the consistency of the paint that they're using. Before that, they weren't even giving paint consistency a thought. And trust me, being aware of paint consistency is very important to your success in watercolor. So there you have it, five steps tea, coffee, milk, cream, and butter. I encourage you to practice these steps with your, your paint. Create the chart I show here. You will learn a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day and keep on growing in watercolor.